Do you know how to start sweet potatoes? Hello everybody, this is Deb from Just Do Something Homestead, and today we are going to learn how to grow slips from your sweet potatoes. Slips are what you plant in your garden to grow more sweet potatoes. And I am so excited. Exactly one year ago today, I started this YouTube channel. And in that year, we now have 6,300 subscribers and I have published 345 videos. My goodness, that is almost one video a day. But becoming a content creator on YouTube has not always been that easy. The very first video that I created was on growing sweet potato slips. And boy, did I mess up that video. I held the camera sideways the music was so loud and I didn't know how to adjust it, so you couldn't even hear my voice. And lastly, I used my pre-K voice and we talked about how to plant sweet potatoes. Oh my goodness, I'm surprised anybody stuck along for the ride. But you know what? They did. And each time I published a new video, I got more and more encouragement from my subscribers to keep on going. So today I'm gonna to show you a video very similar to my first one, and we're gonna talk about how to grow slips on your sweet potatoes. But this time I won't make all those mistakes, mm, or perhaps some different ones. And please watch to the end to see one of my biggest bloopers yet. In order to start your own slips off of your sweet potatoes, you're gonna need four things. First, you need sweet potatoes. Then you need a tray to grow them in. You're gonna want seed starting mix, and the last thing you're gonna need is a heat mat. Let's talk about each one of those items. First is sweet potatoes, and these are some of ours that I saved specifically to grow this year. We raised Beauregard, and when you're looking for which potatoes to save so that you can make slips, you actually want the smaller ones, not the huge ones. Here are a series of pictures from last year's sweet potato harvest. Now, if you don't have any sweet potatoes, you can also buy organic ones from your grocery store. I've had a lot of success starting my slips from organic sweet potatoes. It's a way to get some different varieties into the ones I have. One thing I was really excited to find just yesterday was purple sweet potatoes. I had considered ordering slips from companies until I saw they're about $2 a slip and you need to get at least 12. So I was like, no, I'm gonna try to raise my own. And this huge one right here, I also purchased in a store, and this one is called a Bonato. Uh, it is a Caribbean sweet potato. They're a little bit different, but I am always willing to try something unique. They're also called Batata, and as you can see, he's starting to grow. So I am really hopeful about this one. The difference on these, these are sweet potatoes, but the insides are white, and it's more of a combination of a traditional potato and a sweet potato. So today I am going to start Beauregard that I grew, two organic ones that I found in the store, and then some purple ones that I also found. You're gonna want a large tray. You can find these easily at Walmart. They often have the cells in them. I took the cells out because I'm gonna use those later to grow some of my seedlings. Next, you need some seed starting mix. And this one is organic. I only use organic seed starter. And again, this one came from Walmart. Last thing you're gonna need is a heat mat. I ordered these from Amazon and I use them all the time to start my seeds. So all you need is a couple of them. You can alternate them, switch them around. It doesn't take long until your sweet potatoes start to grow their slips. This is exactly what we are going to do today. We are gonna set it up. What you see here are the slips that are starting to grow. This tray I started exactly one month ago so that it would have some slips on there so you could see what it would do. All right, let's get started. You're gonna to wanna to fill your tray about halfway up with your seed starter mix. 
If your bag of seed starter is really light, that means that it is pretty dry. So next I'm going to pour some water on there. This is about two cups and it will soak into it. It just takes a little bit of time. Cups typically grow on the ends of the sweet potatoes. So what I try to do is push the end down into the soil. It doesn't matter which direction is up or down, just move it back and forth. And then this is the tip that I wanna have down in the soil. You can even push the soil around it. And that's all you do. You just go around and you systematically place your sweet potatoes, pushing down slightly into the soil. Some people like to start theirs in a jar of water, but what I found is that mine just seem to do so much better, more productive if I start them on soil. And honestly, that is all it takes to put your sweet potatoes in and get them to start growing. Next step is to plug in your heat mat on a windowsill by a sunny window and just make sure you add a little bit of water every couple days. I wanna show you real quick what you do with these slips once they start coming up. Now, typically I wait until they're a couple inches taller, but I wanna show you how you get them rooted and it's really easy. You're just gonna break these off. I twisted off three of the slips that were growing on my sweet potato, and two of them are starting to already get one central root. So I am going to put it in a tiny container of water, and you wanna check this every day and make sure that there is water provided. Once they get their root system growing strong, I can plant them in a pot. Last year, I started hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of slips exactly like this. This is the third slip that I just twisted off and look at this. I truly have never seen such a root system on a slip that I just barely twisted. So I'm gonna plant this one right away. As I plant them, I no longer use seed starter. Instead, I'm switching to organic potting soil. Since this guy is so far along, I am going to move him upstairs under my grow lights. Oh, and did I mention a blooper at the end of this video? Here you go. Here's a little trick. Those two slips kept trying to fall down into the water. You don't want them below the water surface. So what I did, I just took a rubber band and that gives them something to hold them up so they don't fall in. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today on our one year anniversary. I cannot say this enough. You are the best subscribers in the world. And thank you so very, very much for following along on our journey. Whether we are vacuum sealing, crocheting, raising animals, uh, creating homemade granola or anything that we do on the homestead. It is such a blessing to have you join along. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Have a blessed day, everybody. Bye-bye.